Hello ladies and gents and other. This is Please Get Me Started and I'm Nigel Habersham. We've got a very special show for you today. My, my producers have managed to acquire a most excellent guest. His name is Sherlock Holmes. Perhaps you've heard of him. Let's see if I can get Mr. Holmes started. Mr. Holmes, welcome to Please Get Me Started. Well, it's a treat to be here. Thank you. So, first of all, tell us who you are, really. Sorry? I'm just curious to know who you are when you're not Sherlock Holmes. Well, I don't know, Mr. Havisham. Who are you when you're not uh, Nigel Havisham? It's Havisham with, with a B, uh, as in Baskerville. Uh, but look, we just uh, want to uh, reveal your identity, so you're obviously a great, great talent, uh, and this will only add names to your long list, I'm sure, of admirers. Huh. Well, I do wish I could oblige you and your viewers. Mr. Habersham, I, I'm no actor. I'm Sherlock Holmes. I, I see. Well, then, um, Mr. Holmes... Uh, please tell us, what's it like to be a fictional character? Well, I certainly wouldn't know, Mr. Habersham. Would you? I don't know, Mr. Holmes. But I can say this. Uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle created you in 1887, at which point you were in your, your 40s or so, and that makes you about 130 today. Ah, yes. Mr. Conan Doyle. He certainly did appropriate my life for his literary pursuits. Make no mistake about that. But I can assure you, Mr. Havisham, he did not create me. That job was left to my parents. Oh, for God's sake. This is, this is poppycock. Did, did my producers put you up to this? Put me up to what, sir? There are two options here. Either you are having a go at me, or... You're a complete nutter. Now, if it's the former, it has to stop now, and we must have a normal conversation between two sane people. If it's the latter, then it's time for you to return to your group home and resume treatment. I'm not sure I understand what's got you in such a tizzy, Mr. Habersham. I so you really think that you are Sherlock Holmes? At your service. Oh, for the love of... All right, Mr. Holmes. You are mad. Completely, absolutely bonkers. Quite the contrary, Mr. Habersham. I'm known round the world most of all for my sound mind, for my command of reason, for my use of logic. All right, Mr. Holmes. Why don't you tell us what fascinatingly puzzling case you're working on these days? Well, Mr. Habersham, as it happens, I've retired, essentially. I know. Of course, of course he's retiring. He's retiring, ladies and gentlemen, after a long and illustrious career of not existing. So, um... But I do take on the occasional case, Mr. Habersham. In fact, right now I'm working on... Oh, no, no, don't, don't tell me, Mr. Holmes. Don't tell me. The body of a man was found near the moors. Uh, and there was... A vial of lizard's blood in his kerchief. And you, you suspect foul play, don't you, Mr. Holmes? Something along those lines, I'm sure? No. Nothing quite like that. It's just a missing persons case. Oh, do go on, Mr. Holmes. A missing person. How, how exciting. To be honest, I'm a bit stumped on this one, actually. So I thought I'd make use of crowdsourcing share a bit of what I know about the case here on your show, and see if any interesting tips or information comes out of the proverbial woodwork. Oh yes, interactivity. You know, the modern world loves it. So go on, tell us a bit about the, the case. Well, to begin with, the person I'm looking for is a man named James Donahauer. What? Do you know anyone by that name, Mr. Habersham? James, James who? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Ah, but you see, Mr. Habersham, I think you do know. What? What rubbish are you talking about, Sherlock Holmes? Well, Mr. Habersham, I've, I've conducted quite a few interrogations in my career, 
and I've come to discover that you often learn more from a person's reaction to a question than you do from his verbal response. For example, your reaction just now here. Oh, my reaction. Yes, what about it? Well, to begin with, you went white as a ghost. Then you spent the next few moments trying to compose yourself. You've been extremely uncomfortable ever since. Well, of course. I'm uncomfortable to be in the presence of, of, of a delusional maniac. And who might that be, Mr. Habersham? You, of course, you complete raving lunatic. Now listen, please get me started. It's not a freak show, and I'm not bloody P.T. Barnum. I will not exploit some poor sap who's quite clearly a few sandwiches short of a picnic. I do enjoy a picnic, yes. Enough. That's enough. This interview is terminated.